today we are playing a game that's not called Thunder Road. It's, it's called Thunder Road Vendetta. Is that really how you want to open? <laughs> this is a Thunder Road. <laughs> Welcome back to the table. Today we have a game called Thunder Road Vendetta. It is not the original Thunder Road because this is the next one from Restoration Games. They've done what they do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They've taken a game from yesteryear, from our pasts. And at this one, Thunder Road, was that I your was, age group? I mean, it was not. No, I, I'm, a little, I'm a little young for it. I think so it was, it was like right in between our age groups. I think it was because I want to say it was in maybe the 90s. Yeah, I was a little young then. Yeah, I was maybe I a little I think it was long. like an early 90s game. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't playing as much board games at the time. But none of that matters. This is Thunder Road Vendetta. And they've taken the Thunder Road formula, which is just if you've never played that, chaotic fun. Crazy, silly, chaotic fun. Yeah. And they've basically kept that, but made it maybe a little bit more of a controlled chaos. Well, they've also made it more of a, a game that you'd expect to see in today's game market. Yes. And I think that that's an, an important distinction to talk about what Restoration Games does with the whole restoring games. Like, you know, they're not just bringing back a classic. They're not repackaging it, reprinting it with new artwork. I mean, they no. are fundamental, fundamentally modernizing the mechanics. And what was, honestly, kind of just like a roll and move game where you're rolling dice and you're moving. It was very dice centric. Yeah. And this one also has some dice, but there's a lot of other things right. that's been added to there's it. There's a lot more added to it to, to add new levels to it, new levels of engagement with the player, yeah. and just new chaotic and fun things that can just randomly happen during the game. Yeah, and chaotic fun things <laughs> happening during the game is indeed what will happen. Yeah, you in gotta this. lean into that chaos. Yeah, so if you're not familiar with the theme, this is basically post-apocalyptic wasteland, dune buggies and armored vehicles, riding down a road, Thunder Road in yep. fact, and basically trying to ram each other, trying to shoot each other. You've got copters that's going to come into play where you can bring those things in and do airstrikes, uh, all in the interest of basically trying to eliminate the other players at the table. Uh, we've just got two of us here, but we've set up for four. Yeah. And it can be, like I said, uh, chaos. But a controlled chaos because obviously there are some rules involved here and they've added to it in terms of what you do on your turn. Yeah, I mean, you are still rolling dice. So yeah. th this is still a dice rolling game, but you're getting to assign your dice as you see fit. So that's kind of the, the cool thing here is you've got actually four places to put your dice every round, three cars, a small, medium, and large car, which you'll see off to the side, and a little player board that gives you some special abilities you can actually use. Uh, like the ability to drift, nitro, to call in an airstrike, and to even repair some of your broken down cars. Yeah, it's really cool. In fact, the way that works is you're going to roll up at the beginning of every round all of the four dice. And when you use your die, you have to use one die on each of your cars that's not out of commission, basically. Mm -hmm. But on one of those turns, you can also use the fourth die to activate one of those what they call commands. And you can only do that once per round. So if on my first turn I activate my small car and one of these commands, I'm done with my commands. Every other player at the table knows that I'm done with my commands. So if I used it, say, used the nitro ability, everyone knows that I'm not going to be able to use my copter for the rest right. of the round. So it makes it a little bit more interesting. You want to going to want to pay attention to how people are using their dice for sure. Well, and also which which cars they've already activated because yes, part of the game is ramming people, shooting people, getting into a position behind them where you can blast at them with your guns, and knowing when one of your cars is gone means I can safely get in front of that car and I know that it's not going to activate again and ram me or shoot at me, or I just know it's kind of stuck there. I can just take some turns getting behind it and shooting at it. It can't go anywhere. Yeah, the timing is interesting, and I think I'm not incredibly familiar with the original game, but I do believe that is one significant difference. I mean, there's a lot of differences, but one significant difference in the flow of the play is in that game, I think you used your dice on your turn, you finished. Yep. This one, everyone rolls the die, and then one die at a time, players take turns. So you're not using all of your cars or doing all of your turn. You're kind of going around the table until you've used all three of your die and your fourth on your command board. Yeah, and again, like David said, not only the timing is important, but also the positioning. You're seeing a lot of different things on the board. You're seeing some actual road spaces, some mud spaces, some dirt spaces, 
And we have this bonus die called the road die that actually lets you move a little bit farther if you stay on the road the entire time. Which is hard. Which is hard to do because you're trying to avoid these hazards. You're trying to avoid possibly some wrecks that might be out on, and the, on the field and other cars. The other cars. Because after the first round, all these cars are basically going to be out here kind of piled up. Now, the first round is kind of nice because they don't allow any guns. Yeah, you have to, you know, you're you have to not warm firing. your guns up. You have to warm those up so the first round is going to get cars out there. Now, with that said, it doesn't have any rules against slamming. That's true. You're um, going to be doing a lot of slamming. And then from round two on, all bets are off. You can use your copter, get it out there to do uh, do some damage. You can slam. You can shoot at the end of your turn. So here's what you're going to be doing on your turn. You're going to be using one of your die, or maybe two if you use yep. a command, to simply move your car that number of spaces. Now, let's talk about a few of the commands. I've already mentioned the airstrike. You can use any die before you use your car to simply take your copter, put it anywhere out here on the board, and then resolve a shoot on the car yeah, in front which is of it. Cool. Uh, then you're going to move your car. When you move your car, you're simply going to move it this number of spaces. Now, if I was moving this car right here, I could go one, two, three, four, or I could move into mud, and mud is going to usually take a little bit more to move into, too, unless it's your last move. But you're basically moving around here. One of the things other than cars and other than that copter that you're going to want to avoid are these hazards. When you move into a hazard, you're simply, and it, whether it's the final move or if it's during your move, you're going to resolve that and flip it. This one's nice. It's just a piece of road. So if I did that, mm -hmm. I'd continue on with my move. But some of these can do other things. There's an oil slick here that's going to resolve and let you slide in a direction. There are some that are mines. Yeah. There's some that are wrecks, which are going to be some, bring some of those wrecks out onto the board. Of course, you can avoid any of these hazards if you want to, but either by being strategic about your movement or by using the drift ability, which is the next ability yeah. you can have, which just lets you ignore the first thing you'd run into. But if it's another car, you can simply just ignore it and go along your way, drift, drifting around it. And you can also repair your cars because you will be taking damage over the course of the game. And I think that this is another way that they've really improved upon the formula. Yeah, I do know that the original one required when you rolled your die on your turn, only on double sixes were you able to repair a car. Now in this one, the cars are going to be able to take a little bit of damage. Whenever you take a damage, this is a really cool aspect yeah. of the game, instead of simply re reducing you know, points on the car, you're going to actually take a damage token, flip it over, it's going to be added to that car below its position and you can see there's only spots for two damage but then you're going to resolve whatever that damage is if i had taken damage with my large vehicle and had this flipped over it's going to skid and it says to skid forward one space i would simply move forward one space now i could skid in a different direction i might skid into another hazard and then i'd have to resolve that hazard i might skid into another car and then we'd resolve a ram. Right. And the ram is kind of a, a very big part of this game. So I do want to mention at least if we don't cover all of the different things. We, we, yeah, these, these how dice you over ram. Here, these are like these are like the chaos dice of the game. Yes. And they just like they add to this chaos because like David said, once you trigger something, like you could have tri triggered a damage that rammed you into another car, then you're doing a slam. And every time you roll uh the slam dice, you're gonna either uh, roll a top or bottom car because every time you ram, if you wanna yeah, let's, layers of those cars, let's you say literally I, do ram into the other car. Say I rammed his large vehicle with my medium. You put it on top, if you can, <laughs> of that vehicle, and then you roll the ram dice. Yeah, and the dice are going to tell you whether the top or the bottom car is affected and where that car ends up going. So the bottom car might end up going one space forward, one space backwards. It might end up going sideways, up and down. There's a lot of different ways it can go. Now, your whole chaos element here is that you can slam a car, into another car, into a hazard, or potentially off the board. Yeah, if you go off the sides of the board, either this way or this way, you're eliminated from the game. Yeah. Now, that, that's the worst case scenario. You can- well, your, your car is eliminated from your, the game. Your car is eliminated from the game. If all three of your cars are eliminated from the game, you are eliminated <laughs> yeah, from the game. It's a little harder to do. The other thing that can happen to your car, though, if it's not eliminated, if it takes at any time Two damage, and again, every time you take damage, you're going to resolve those tokens. But once you have two, you're going to be inoperable. So say my medium car was out here, it got hit, it took two damage. It would turn around on the board, and from that point forward until I repair it, mm -hmm. it's not doing anything. I can't move it, I can't shoot with it, I can't do anything with it. Now, with that said, 
it can still be bumped around. You know, someone can drive up there really fast and slam into it and hopefully, you know, maybe on the chance that it slides off the board. But once all three of your cars are incapacitated or eliminated, you're out of the game. And that's yeah. generally the whole goal of this game is to be the last person standing with cars on the board. Other cool thing about this, and this is very similar to the original, we're all going to be driving down this board. And as you can see here, the board is modular here. We have these three pieces to it. You start here, you go down here. As soon as any car were to move off the end, this board is going to slide down like this. Yep. This board is going to leave the game. Any vehicles on that last board are gone. Probably there won't have that many. No, but... there probably won't be that many. Unless someone really just tries to fly up. But they're all going to be eliminated, then you add another board. And depending on player count, you're going to do this a few different times mm -hmm. from that stack and drive to the end. Now, it is possible to get to that finish line and win that way, but more likely than not, it's going to be a case where there's one person left with cars oh, and yeah. everyone I else mean, is with, lost. With the sheer amount of chaos that's happening here and the sheer amount of ways there are to eliminate other players' cars by shooting out at them with the airstrike, by shooting at them with your car, and by causing some of these damage things, I think one of the highlights from our play was when I made you skid out and you actually skidded out so far that you went off the board. Yeah. Which is just wild. And you, you have to embrace that chaos, knowing that like there's no perfectly deterministic way to set up your turn. Yeah. You're going to get knocked out. You're going to get spun out. You're going to slide. I mean, these things are just going to happen. Yeah. And those are absolutely the most fun moments of this game. There was another moment where I had shot, I came up behind one of Ryan's vehicles, shot it, and it slid into another one of his vehicles yeah. creating a slam and then he had to resolve the slam and one of his vehicles slid, slid off, off the into, road yeah. off the road one of mine slid into a helicopter. my helicopter and if you end up your move uh. in the helicopter space you're automatically eliminated so it's it gets really crazy but it is definitely a lot of fun again Silly, chaotic fun, but more of a controlled version of that with this yeah, version of the now, game. Now, I do want to say that they have also added in a whole other level to the game that oh, yeah. I would say is more for like gamery gamers. Yeah. And it's I like variable player powers and some special upgrades to your cars. Yeah, this is called the Chop Shop, and I don't think this has been revealed anywhere oh. else. Uh, but the Chop Shop is at least one part of the expansion content they have planned. I don't know if they have more planned or not. But the Chop Shop adds a few things. Like Ryan just said, it adds these crew leaders. These are going to replace those command boards. Mm -hmm. And it's effectively a new command board. Most of the abilities are similar, but on some of these crew leaders, it's going to be different. A little different. And then the crew leaders are all going to have a variable power that's always in effect too. So you're adding variable powers to it. So you have a, a, a few different things going on, as well as command tokens. You know, the one thing we mentioned a few times is when you're using your die, you can only use the fourth die on the command board once mm -hmm. around. Well, these command tokens let you sort of break that rule. You can use a command token as well and maybe use the yeah, command they're, powers they're like a little bit more. too, because they can activate any number. But once yeah. you're out, you're, you're, you're out of these things. And then the other cool, and probably, in my opinion, the cooler aspect of this Well, I do shop, love variable player powers, but yes. The upgrades. So there's a whole deck, and a lot of these are not final art, but we have a few here in the front that are final art, that are upgrades for the car. Before you begin the game, you deal four out to each player, and then you're going to do a draft until you've drafted three upgrades. And then before the game starts, you assign one upgrade to each of your cars. And these things do some pretty crazy things. I'm looking right here, oil dispenser. Oh, yeah. After you move, you may place an oil slick in any empty space in the car's rear arc, which are the three spaces behind the car. So you're, you're going to be dropping oil slicks uh -huh. behind you. The chaos. This one is the spoiler. The road die is always treated as two for this car. So even if the road die is one, the spoiler is going to let you go a little faster. And then this one, very defensive and very good, armor plating. A shooting result of any, and we didn't talk about shooting in detail, but whenever you shoot at a car, you're going to roll this die to see if it hits. And the die has a few different spaces, yeah. medium and small, large, and then there's a couple spaces that say any that will hit any vehicle. Well, if you have armor plating, the any side is treated as a miss. Oh, that's huge. It is huge. I mean, I, I love the way that these upgrades change the game. And that's kind of... I think one of the things to stress here that, that uh, Restoration has brought to it is that variability yeah. of, of randomly setting up the board, having different uh, crew chiefs, crew leaders, different upgrades every time you play. And who knows? I I wouldn't be surprised if there was some other 
expansion content that made it even more variable. Yeah, we'll have to check the campaign. In fact, if you have any questions, once their campaign is up and running, which is a, which will be very soon, mm -hmm. check that out for sure. But if you have any questions right now about we, what we've talked about, I know we've kind of glossed over what you do in the game, but we <laughs> have played it a couple times now, so we can answer any of your questions down below. So feel free to make them there. Until next time, though, make sure everyone has fun at the table, and we'll see you then. And drive safe. <laughs> Congratulations, you got to the end of one of our videos. Now, if you want more practice, just click on the video over here. It's another video. You might not have seen it yet, so click on it. If you don't want to do that, at least click on the subscription button below. That always helps us. And if you want notifications, please ring that bell.